علمي من الرحمن ذي الآلاء بالله حست الفضل لا بدهاء كيف الوصول إلى مدى نثني عليه وليس حول ثنائي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Our dear viewers, welcome to another episode of the philosophy of the teachings of Islam, a program in which we review the masterpiece of the teachings of the promised Messiah, that is Islami Wusulki philosophy, the philosophy of the teachings of Islam. And with me is Shehi Zaki Ahmed. Sheikh Sahib. Yes, please. Previously, we saw the three states, that is the state that a human being ceases to be an animal into, an, in, into a human being, and they were three. That is, the soul that incites to evil, the reproving soul, and the soul at rest. Of recent, in our last episode, we saw another three norms. That is, the natural, no, the natural moral, and spiritual conditions or states, as the promised Messiah explained. May you also give us the three means of reforming humanity, as the promised Messiah Salam, stated or mentioned in the book, Philosophy, the Philosophy of the Teachings of Islam. A'udhu billahi sami'u al-alim, min ash-shaytan al-rajim, bismillahi ar-rahman ar-rahim. In uh, the philosophy of the teachings of Islam, as you've rightly pointed out, we saw in the last episode, that reformation or progress in uh, uh, the whole of Quran is gradual. <coughs> it's not an abrupt thing. That today you are um, in the first stage, which uh, we call the physical or natural state of man, and tomorrow abruptly you are in the next stage, or you are in the spiritual state. No, the whole of Quran, if you read uh, the book which we are studying today, the philosophy of the teachings of Islam, the promised Messiah told us that there are uh, three um, stages of reforming humanity. And the very first stage, he says, is that uh, useless savages should be taught the elementary social values. You know, as we told you that in the, at the first place, the natural state, man acts the way other animals do, eating. And uh, we also saw a hadith of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa alihi wa sallam, where we can understand this very well, that he saw this young man, a boy, eating with uh, his left hand, right hand, you know, and uh, also just eating around the plate was not orderly in his manner of, uh, of, of dining. So the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told him that, Ya Gulam, kul biyaminik, wa kul mimma yalik. That, oh young man, eat with your right hand and eat from what is in front of you. You see, this is the, 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 the system we are talking about. That in eating, we all eat the, like, just like animals do eat. But if you add in value in that act of eating, then it transforms you from the savage life into a human being, a social human being. So that is the very first uh, form of uh, reformation that the Holy Quran seeks to, to, to give us. And then the second one is 
that when a person has adopted elementary human ways, he should be taught higher moral values. Now, you have um, implied that reason and understanding to your actions. You are no more acting, just like animals do. You, you are um, giving, you are directing your actions with reason. And uh, uh, you are now putting things at the right time. You are doing things at the right time and the right place. Now, you, the whole Quran uh, tends or reforms man and does not want him to stay there, but to teach him higher moral values. That is the second form. Uh, that, that, that is the second reforming humanity that the Promised Messiah tells us in the philosophy of the teachings of Islam. And then the third one, he says that those who have acquired high moral qualities should be given a test of drought, of love of God, and union with God. Now at this stage, the last stage, the spiritual state, man, after getting that higher moral values, the whole Quran directs him to dedicate all his, all his actions towards the, his creator, God Almighty. As he was teaching us before, that uh, the whole Quran says that Bala man aslama wajahu lillahi rabbil alameen that he who has sacrificed all his being to his Lord. And then in the Holy Quran, in another verse of the Holy Quran, he says that, Qul, inna salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen. Reminding us about the uh, command given to the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that say, my salat, my prayers, my life, everything which I do in my life, my death, everything is for God the Almighty. So this is where, well, this is the ultimate end, the highest level that Islam wants one to be. At the second stage, man is just like a baby. He explained it in the, and we also spoke about it in the episodes before, that man is just like a, a baby who is standing, trying to walk. Sometimes he falls out of weakness. So the second stage, man is not yet perfect in what uh, he is doing. But when he reaches the third state, where he surrenders all his, oh, he, his being, all his actions, he directs them to God the Almighty, then he reaches perfection. And that is called nafs mutma'inna, the soul at rest. It has gone through all the two stages, the first stage, the second stage, and has also added on the third stage. That is nafs mutma'inna, a soul at rest. We saw that earlier on, Arabs reached an extent that they committed every sin, you can say, let me term it like that, to the extent that somebody could produce a child and he says, I want to kill this child. Shesahi, should I say that at the time of the Prophet Sallam. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the right time and why? The Promised Messiah Alayhi Salam in the book, The Philosophy of the Teachings of Islam, took up this point and explained <coughs> to us that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's advent was at, was at a time uh, of great need for mankind. That was the time when mankind needed him. That was the time when man has reached a, a, a stage of understanding the perfect teachings of God Almighty. As we say that uh, as progress is always gradual, so also God the Almighty sent other prophets before the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam teaching people according to their understanding, teaching people according to the, to, to the vice that were in the society. Now at the time of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa alihi wa sallam, people or human beings had started to unite. They started to know things that were done outside of their environment, outside of their 
tribes, uh, outside of their tribes, clans, outside of their uh, daily life. People had started coming together. And take an example of the Arabian uh, Peninsula. It was like the center. People would trade, would walk to go and sell their merchandise and, and then buy other things. So in so doing, they mixed up. This in Arabia, in Arabia where you find the Jews, the Christians were there, you will find Africans were there. So at that time, also the vices within those people, and as the Prophet Muhammad tells us in his book, says that Zohar al Fasadu fil barri wal bah. That is the, 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 the situation by then. And I would like to translate this as the Prophet Muhammad himself translated it. He said that Zohar al Fasadu fil barri wal bah. This means that the people of the book, as well as those who had no experience of revelation, had all been corrupted. Now, corruption did not have a boundary. People who had a book themselves were corrupted. And those who had nothing, they were also corrupted. Because you know that people of the book, um, the Jews had a book. The Christians too had a book. So their religion were corrupted. And come and see the Arabs who had no experience of divine revelation. And even other nations too. They were also corrupted. They, you will understand this after knowing the way the Arabs used to conduct their lives. You know, they not only did they commit sin and uh, misconducts, but they were proud of every kind of sin they did. They were proud of it. And they will even talk about uh, the, uh, the, the mischiefs that they committed. Uh, the Prophet Muhammad said that they took pride in every type of sin and misconduct. You know, for example, uh, we see very well that nowadays the uh, students of uh, the Arabic language, we always learn what we call the Saba al muallaqat the seven poets that were hanged on the, on the Kaaba. These were written by poets of that time. And if a poet took the first place in that competition, his poem will be written and hanged on the Kaaba because the Kaaba was the center of everything. That is an honor, great honor to that, uh, to that um, uh, poetry and the poet himself. But if you look at what they were writing, actually shows what, they will, what, they were, uh, what their behavior was. Look at the very first one among the, the, the seven uh, uh, poems. It, it's uh, Umar al-Qais great poet of those Arabs. But if you could drink and then find some ladies somewhere and you use them the way you want and then explain that act of yours in the eloquent Arabic language more than any other, you are the best. But the best in what? In, in talking evil. about your evil doing. The promised Messiah also told us that a man married unlimited number of wives, and they were all addicted to the use of everything unlawful. There was no uh, limit. And uh, the one who had many women was the most honored among them. So this is the way they are. And there were no rules. As I told you, the savage life, there was no rules of marriage. You know? One could marry the number, yes. But also, they had no rules that you should not marry from uh, your relatives, maybe. Your mother. Well, if somebody's mother died, you could marry the, the mother. There was no rules. And then, Killing of female infants. The Prophet Messiah said that they killed their female infants with their own hands. You know, giving birth to a female at that time was seen as a disgrace to the family. And 
the whole Quran actually says that uh, such a person uh, uh, used to think that should I kill it or I should leave it alive and bear with the disgrace in the society. So there were two options. Whether you accept that this is a disgrace to the society and you, la you let your female uh, child alive or you kill that child. This was uh, there. And again, the orphans, they used to, to use up the wealth of others. The orphans were, there was no any rights of the orphans. One could even kill an orphan and take the property. If an orphan was not uh, from uh, the respectable family, then they were not even uh, killing them, but they just took, grabbed their wealth and, and took them away. This is the way they are. That was the society in which he came. Ya'kuluna kama ta'kulul an'am. Even in uh, the style of eating was just like the style of animals. They were not having any manners. So that was the perfect time for, for, them, to be, uh, for them to be taught the morals, the manners of uh, uh, society, the social values, and then revive their spirituality. To bring home <coughs> to those people who had the book, the people of the book, that remember, this is what your book says. And uh, even to help those who had not yet got a chance to test the divine revelation that look, this is how uh, the, uh, the way human being need to, to, to behave. He's a social human being, he's a social animal. He needs to, 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 to have those values of the society and then uplift them to the high and the highest level of spirituality. Thank you very much, Sheikh Sahib. Are there some importances of the three formations that we've talked of in the whole Quran? Yes, now putting in mind the picture that the promised Messiah is showing us, the <coughs> picture of uh, uh, the situation by then, Zahar al Fasad fil Bar wal Bah. Such people who were having divine. Uh, divinely um, revealed scriptures were corrupted and uh, not talking about those who had for their matter was worse. The promised Messiah says, and I quote, the whole purpose of the Quran is the three reforms and all its teachings are directed towards that end. As we spoke about the gradual progress. So the teachings of the Holy Quran, if you analyze them very well, some of us uh, have the Holy Quran, we read it, but we don't have actually that capacity of analyzing uh, the teachings of the Holy Quran. The promised Messiah, the reformer of the age, he read the Holy Quran and helped us to group the reforms of the Holy Quran into three. And answering the question which was uh, referred, which was put uh, uh, up by the organizers of the conference. Remember, they told him that the very first question was to explain the, the physical, uh, moral, and, and spiritual speech. state of man. Now, reforming those stages, not only pointing out to them, when the Holy Quran discusses issues, does not only mention the issues, but also provide, pro provides the remedy to those uh, issues, to those ailments in the society. The Prophet Messiah says that first of all, God desires to teach man the rules of social behavior, like sitting, standing, eating, drinking, talking, etc. That is the very, uh, 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 the very first stage. And the purpose of this is, as the promised Messiah says, that the purpose of the whole Quran was to elevate savages into man. You know? When time took, uh, when uh, it took long for the people of the book with what they had, and uh, such immorality were rampant in the society, they forgot everything and they became like animals. We've quoted the hadith. 
even eating was a, was a problem. Drinking, and uh, you remember if you, ad you are addicted to alcohol, you know what it does to you? You are more or less than animal. Even sometimes, if animal had understanding, they will uh, wonder what man is doing. It is only animals that can uh, meet its opposite sex anywhere. And you know that man was at that stage. Man was at that stage. If you read the, uh, the, the Arabic poetry of the uh, Jahiliya, you, this won't be hidden from you anymore. Man was like that. And if you find such behaviors today, then you know that we still have people who are living a savage life. So the whole Quran, the teachings of the whole Quran, lifts man from that savage life into a, a man, a man, a, 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 a human being. Now, after becoming a human being, the Prophet Messiah says that then to equip him with moral qualities, higher moral qualities, does not leave you at the first stage, but also takes you that you have to sharpen the weapon that you have, the morals. As I was, uh, as I told you the other time, that gold, even after mining it is gold, but you have to refine it for it to look better. And it's pure gold. And it becomes pure gold, as you've oh, rightly said. So even the morals you have, they are better than the savage life, but you still have to work on them to become pure morals, higher moral qualities. So that is the second uh, uh, stage. And that is the second purpose of the second form of reformation that the Holy Quran teaches us. And the third is that finally, to raise them, those who have attained higher moral qualities, to raise them to the level of godly persons. Now this is the highest level, the nafsu mutma'inna that we are talking about. That's where the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took his companions from, gradually. From those people, ya'akuluna kama ta'kulu al-an'am, that they even used to eat like the way animals eat, to people of higher moral qualities. That the Holy Quran says that radiyallahu anhum wa radu anhum that God was pleased with them, and they were pleased with him. That's where the Holy Quran um, wants us to be. That's the level where uh, it wants human beings to be. And unless you get to that level, you are not yet there. You cannot be rest assured that you are, yes, you've made it in life. You made it in life when you reach that level of uh, spirituality. As I was reading this book, I got across two words that look almost the same, but the promise Messiah said they are different. Haluk and Holok. May you try to give us the distinction between these two words? Shesaib. The promise Messiah and Imam Mahdi alayhi salam uh, says that. Uh, Thus, when a person exercises all these qualities on their proper occasions and at their proper places, they are called moral qualities. God the Glorious has addressed the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in these words, Innaka la ala khuluqin azim. And you uh, the Holy Prophet said that, and you do surely possess higher moral excellences. This one means, as we have uh, been talking before, that uh, the Holy Prophet came at a time of great, uh, greatest need, that he had himself to be with those higher moral qualities in order to teach mankind how to achieve those moral qualities. 
Otherwise, somebody who is not at that level cannot uh, actually teach people how to reach there. So he had the moral qualities. And then it is him who can pull other people towards himself. Otherwise, if he himself did not possess those moral qualities, he could not have taught mankind how to be there. And uh, also, one of his wives of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in one hadith say that, مَا رَأَيْتُ أَحَدًا قَدْ أَحْسَنْ خُلْقْ مِنْ مُحَمَّدٍ Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that I've never seen anyone with those higher moral qualities like the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If one's wife should give that testimony, then trust me, he was having those uh, higher uh, qualities explaining the verse of the Holy Quran. Thanks a lot, Al Sheikh Sahib, for your contribution towards the program, The Philosophy of the Teachings of Islam. We shall continue from there in our next episode. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Almi min al rahmani dil بالله حست الفضل لا بدهائي كيف الوصول إلى مدارج شكره نثني عليه وليس حول ثناه